Good morning. So, as you heard, my name is Kaelin Kahilapalapi Kavei Q Aluna Lilo Burney. I'm a junior here at Seabury Hall. I have the honor today of speaking to you guys about the trip I took, where I traveled to the United Nations as a U.S. representative, and taking the lessons I learned from my fellow peers there and kind of applying it to a broader scale to share with you guys. Now, it's kind of a lot of stuff to talk about, right? So let me explain a little bit of background. In October 2015, I was the sole representative of the United States of America, that's where we are, in a youth delegation of 10 students from eight countries in the Pacific Rim region to go to the United Nations European headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the United Nations. And the students, all 10 of us, got to give speeches about world peace and environmental stability in order to make the world a better place for the future generations. Of the 10 of us, you can see Maui boy, same suit now. I'm wearing the same suit next week to prom, too. You know, there are 10 of us, right? So we have Lum Lee Hong from Cambodia, Do Kyung Hyo from South Korea, Aino Tarao, Masako Shioya, and Kanako Kimura from Japan, and the white t-shirt in the back, that's Aung Sadoxit and Sotsa from Mongolia. He goes by Danny. Dea Solsabira Amida from Indonesia, Weishuan Lao from China, Huaming Tong from Vietnam, and myself, right? And the speeches were really a wide range of topics from ending world hunger, uh, fighting deforestation, uh, activating the youth to get out and vote, all fantastic topics. I'm not going to pretend to understand everything, because each of them could give 10 TED Talks. And it'd be great. But we all had one common theme. It was that we all agreed that this generation, the youth of like 10 or 11, 30 or so, we have an opportunity that no other generation has had before. We're being raised in an era in which any question we want, we have the internet, we can search anything, any question we have, how to write a TED Talk, we can search it up, and within minutes, we have thousands, millions of links, articles, we can connect to other people all over the world, get our ideas out, and hear other people's ideas, right? And what's really awesome is the internet is always growing. By the year 2020, more than half of the world's population will have internet access, whether it be on a smartphone, a tablet, or a personal or shared computer. That means that by in less than four years, there will be almost four billion people all connected to one internet. We can all share, upload, download, and share our ideas in order to make the world a better place and learn from other people, right? Can you imagine 25 years ago, we couldn't just go online and meet someone and Skype with them from India or China or anywhere. Now we can. It's pretty cool, right? And all these people are connecting through social media, okay? And so they're adding their ideas. We're learning from others. We're liking, sharing, retweeting, commenting, right? And this little anecdote here. After we went to Switzerland, we spent some time in Paris, right? We're kind of sightseeing, celebrating. We've just given speeches to the UN, so we're like really, really stoked, right? And you know that, that cliche when you visit somewhere and you're like, you fall in love with the city and like, you feel like really good and you're like, yeah, I love this place. That happened to me. You know, I fell in love with Paris. Paris, I just felt so comfortable. I learned a little bit of French. So I, was, I was getting along with people. I was speaking to waiters. I was reading signs and reading the magazines and stuff. And it was awesome. It was great. I had a great time. And we came back and I'm sitting in my Hawaiian classroom about 12 days later and my phone starts blowing up and I'm seeing BBC News, AP News, NPR, all these things that's saying, Shootings in Paris, bombings in Paris, even I got an ESPN alert, a suicide attack at the Paris national football game. And I'm thinking, Paris, my city, what the hell's going on? And I'm freaking out. And I'm, we later found out, of course, it was the Paris terror attacks, right? And of course, you guys all know that two weeks or so afterwards, social media was really blowing up and, you know, hashtag Paris for Paris, prayers for Paris, excuse me, and all kinds of posts and comments and videos and tweets and support for the Parisians and the French and anyone around the world who was affected by terrorism, right? Now everyone is kind of working together in unity. Food bank donations skyrocketed, blood donations skyrocketed. It seems as if the world, we're all coming together to fight terrorism and make the world a better place and support those who are affected. And then it kind of faded out of the public eye, you know. People changed their Facebook photos back to the regular photo as opposed to the French flag. You know, nobody really used that hashtag anymore. But we all felt good because you know, we used the hashtag, we commented, we shared, we solved terrorism, we stopped it. No. Unfortunately, 
see Nigeria, Uganda, Mali, Israel, Lebanon, Belgium last week. Unfortunately, we all use the social media, right? How many of you guys have Facebook or Twitter, Tumblr, Snapchat, anything? How many of you guys liked, shared, commented, used a hashtag in support of Belgium or Paris or any of the terror attacks in the past six months? Oh, come on, I know a lot more. I, I'm friends with a lot of you. I've seen them. We all felt good when we did it, right? We felt like we were really doing something. But unfortunately, the social media alone didn't help us, right? And you know, it wasn't just us. You know, Facebook itself was trying to help. You know, Facebook unveiled a new feature in which whenever there is a natural disaster, a terror attack, some major emergency, anyone in the area will see this when they log into Facebook, whether it's on their phone or on the computer. It says, there's an emergency in your area. Check in to let your friends know and emergency services know that you're okay, you're accounted for, you don't need any help. And they have this all over the world. This is just the Paris terror attacks example. And it felt really good, you know? Facebook's saying, all right, we're fixing it. We're solving people. Everyone's safe because of us. Yeah. And we really have to learn that social media will not solve our problems. It's good, you know, you could share it and people know about it. That's great. Knowledge is power. But using your knowledge is even more powerful, right? You remember Tony 2012, four years ago? Sure, most of you guys remember this. You used the hashtag, you saw a video, something, right? That video had over 100 million views in less than six days. Over $36 million in donations to the Tony uh, 2012 organization that was fighting it, the Invisible Children Fund, right? All kinds of fun stats up here. However, after a few months, it faded from the public eye. There was some negative media about it about the organization and the founder. But in the last four years, that money has gone to creating two, only two, like one, two, three, only two laws in Uganda to try to combat Yosef Kony and his child soldiers. However, these guys don't follow the laws in the first place. So in four years, we have two laws, squandered all kinds of money. Yosef Kony's soldiers are still out there. He's still abducting new child soldiers. And every 21 hours, there is a new attack by Yosef Kony's army. But we all felt good when we shared the hashtag, right? We all felt like we were changing something. We all donated. It hasn't gone to much. We have to use more than just social media. We have to get out. We have to put our phones down, put our computers down, log off of Twitter, log off of Facebook. Come on, and just a couple hours. And actually get out and write letters, try to protest, hold up signs, donate to food banks. Donate to blood drives, anything, right? All kinds. We have a little timeline of the Coney events. There are all kinds of ways you can get out beyond social media to make a difference. Okay? Why aren't we doing it? Why aren't we getting up from the couch, getting up from our chairs, getting out of bed, actually getting out and doing something, right? It's so much easier to just sit there on a computer, on your laptop, on your phone, and just, you know, be a slacktivist, just sit at home and feel like you're making a difference. But we have to go beyond that. Get out there, take a little bit less selfies, be a little more selfless. Okay? You have to go out and make a difference. And you have to believe that you can make a difference because we can. All of us were growing up, within six years, most of the people in these three or four rows will be voting. Right? That'll make a difference. And in another 10 years or so, we'll be out of college. A lot of us have the opportunity to run from political office and make a change on the government level, which is a lot more powerful than a couple hashtags. We have to remember that. We have to remember that what we can do can really make the world a better place. You know, to quote the American scientist Leroy Hood, or to paraphrase a quote rather, he says, I do not underestimate the power of what you believe can change the world, or that that world is your office, your community, your home, your school. You have to have the core belief that what you believe and what you feel for can make a fundamental shift or paradigm change in the way we think. Thank you.